What's up you guys, Avery here, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most confusing deck I have ever played. That is Tier Elements. So, welcome to the deck profile. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, hit the like button and all that. Uh, you know, I feel like I've sort of been on a trend lately where I show off decks that are being played in the OCG, and then by the time they come here to the TCG, I don't know, maybe it's just because my deck building's been better as of late, but a lot of the deck lists out of the gate of like branded and stuff like that, took a lot of ideas from like my branded list that I post on the channel. So I'm hoping that when tier elements come here in power the elements uh, in about two months time or so that a lot of people will use this deck list as like a starting point. Um, you know, obviously having to change some things with the Ashizu. God, I can't still can't say it right, but the Ishtar milling support cards that are in the deck. Obviously, you can change things around since we may not have that support in Power of the Elements, and we may not even get it for a while. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, as you are going through this deck profile. And when I say that this is confusing, I mean, if you thought praying kids were tough to learn, this shit's really tough to learn. So let's just go ahead and dive on into this deck profile. And yes, these are printouts, and yes, I am sorry, don't worry, I'll explain the effects as we go, but if they look like they come straight out of manga pages, that's why, because my printer ran out of fucking ink. <laughs> so, we're playing two copies of the Beast of Star Frost of the deck. This is uh, the Rhino Heart, so whenever he's normal or special summon, you can dump a tier elements monster from your deck to grave, and whenever he's sent from the deck to the grave, you can special summon him, but you've got to dump a tier elements uh, monster from your hand to the grave. Um, so obviously dumping off of him is really good because it instantly triggers your other tier elements that all have the same effect of, hey, we're sent to the grave, we want to fuse from the grave hand or field into one of your two fusions that you can play. Um, so he's really good. Uh, he's not really that bad of a brick because I mean, you just normal summon him and then dump like a Shaylin or a Miru and you instantly have uh, a fusion if you combine it with another tier element because in order to make the tier element Lionheart, it requires Lionheart plus two other tier elements monsters, but then you have the one that requires one tier element plus an Aqua. So he's not an Aqua, he's a warrior, so keep that in mind. But really good card overall. And then we're playing two copies of tier elements Miru. So again, like I said, the main tier elements that you play all have the same effect of when they are sent to the graveyard, then you can use their effect to send themselves plus the other materials from your hand field or graveyard to the bottom of the deck in any order to summon a fusion monster. And it's any fusion monster. So, you know, uh, anything that you have the proper materials for in your grave, you can summon. So they all have like a, I guess I should all fusion type of effect or anything that would shuffle into the deck. So keep that in mind. Then they all have their own effects. So Miru, whenever she's no more special summon, she mills three. That's it. So she's good to help get your combos going if you don't have any other way to mill. And then we're also playing three copies of tier element Shaylin. So her effect is that during your main phase, you can special summon it from your hand as long as you're able to dump another monster from your hand to the graveyard. So she's just a really good level 4 extender. If you have Diviner the Herald with her, then you can just summon Diviner, dump like a level 4 Aigido, make it a level 6, summon this out, and then you have an instant Baroness to Fleur. And then the same thing of when she's sent to the grave, uh, she can fusion summon. And then we are also playing three copies of Hafenis. So Hafenis, ignore my terrible uh, cut job right here. Um, so Hafenis' effect is essentially like a hand trap where whenever the opponent activates a monster effect, you can special summon it from your hand and then mill three. So if you're lucky enough to hit a tier elements monster, then you can fuse during the opponent's turn. This uh, creates nutty plays because you basically turn into prank kids and start playing on the opponent's turn. It's really dumb. And then that's it for the tier elements monsters. We then move into the milling aspect of the deck. We're playing three copies of this broken card. Uh, so this is Aigido. So Aigido's effect is that whenever uh, it's sent from the hand or your deck to the grave, it instantly mills five cards from both players' deck to the grave. And then if Exchange of the Spirit is face up on the field or the grave, then you can choose either yourself or the opponent to mill another five cards. Um, this card is just absolutely insane. It's so damn good. Uh, there's so many ways to get in the grave, whether it's Foolish Burial or Diviner to dump it to mill five and then get your plays going. Um, it's it's just really damn good. And then we're playing three copies of Keldeo. So Keldeo is a really good extender along with the 
Medora. Um, and Keldeo's effect is that you can discard one other Earth Fairy, same as Medora, to special summon it from your hand. But unlike Medora that grabs that grabs you a Gravekeeper's Trap from your deck and sets it to your spell and trap zone, Keldeo grabs you either Exchange of the Spirit or a card that lists Exchange of the Spirit in its text. And Exchange of the Spirit is going to be very important later because both Mundora and Keldeo have the effect that if Exchange of the Spirit is in your graveyard, you can banish them from your field or grave to target up to five cards in either player's grave, shuffle them back into the deck, or if Exchange of the Spirit's not on the field or in the grave, then you target three instead. But that comes in very good handy if you're trying to recycle materials or if you're activating Exchange of the Spirit. Then we are also playing, as I mentioned, three copies of the Medora, like I said, you discard to get a Gravekeeper Speller Trap. And then we're playing three copies of Kelbeck, the Ancient Vanguard. So Kelbeck has an effect that whenever the opponent sends uh, a card or cards from their hand or deck to their grave, if they have a special summon monster on their field, you can activate Kelbeck, target the special summon monster, special summon the Kelbeck, and then bounce that special summon monster. It also has an effect that whenever it's sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard, both players mill the top five cards of their deck, and if Exchange of the Spirit is facing upon the field or in your graveyard, you can set a trap from your grave to your field. So that really only comes up if like you mill Exchange of the Spirit, and then you can set Exchange of the Spirit. So yeah, take that for what you will. And then we're playing a little Shadal package. We're playing two copies of Shadal Beast. Now you're probably wondering, Avery, why the hell are you playing Shadal Beast? Well, remember what I said earlier, you can fuse with any proper fusion material monsters in your graveyard, um, as long as you use that tier elements monster you're activating. Well, let's say you want to use Hafenis. Hafenis is a dark. A dark plus beast equals Winda. So imagine that you mill during the opponent's turn and you hit, you know, tier element Shaylin, and you have beast engrave. Well, if you milled both, now you can activate Shaylin on Chainlink 1 and Beast on Chainlink 2. You'll draw a card, put the Beast and the Shaylin on the bottom of your deck, and make a window during the opponent's turn. Tell me that that's not broken, Chief. <laughs> and then we are also playing three copies of the Broken Diviner of the Herald. You'll also play Ints in the extra deck if you want to target that with Diviner. But majority of the time, you're just going to summon the Diviner, dump the Aigido, get a mill 5, get your plays going, bring out another level 4 monster, and then just synchro off into a Baroness. So that's your way to out Zeus, plus any other cards that the opponent may try to play. And then we're also playing three hand traps because we're just moddy that way. We're playing three copies of Herald of the Orange Light because you play a lot of fairies. Um, you know, you've got Diviner itself, you've got the Aigido, the Kelbeck, the Medora, all those are fairies. Um, all of your tier elements minus Rhino Heart are Aqua, but anything that has like an Earth Fairy or if it's Diviner, you're going to be able to use, or I think you can even use Herald of the Orange Light itself. I, it's hard to read these proxies, so I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's just an amazing hand trap. So that's it for the monsters. You play a boatload of them because you want to mill your tier elements. Uh, for the spells, we're playing one copy of Call by the Grave, one Terraforming, one Foolish Barrel, one Instant Fusion because you can activate it to bring out Kit Kalos. And then we're also playing three copies of the field spell that I can never get the name of. Uh, I'm not even going to try to read that, but I'm going to call it the Super Monkey Ball Water Level because it literally looks like that level. Um, so you activate it, and it's like a light stage, except it's once per turn on like light stage. You activate it to add a tier elements monster from your deck to your hand, and then all of your fusion monsters and your tier elements monsters all gain 500 attack. So if you have like window on the board, window becomes 27. It can't be controlled by card effects. That's really busted. And anytime during either player's turn, once per turn, if a card or cards is sent from your graveyard to the deck, or extra deck, then you can target a face-up card in the opponent's field to pop it. So if you start sending back cards during the opponent's turn with like Keldeo or Medora, then you get a free pop. This card is just, it's its busted. It's absolutely busted. Um, and then for the traps, we're playing one, good lord, I can't even read these proxies. We're playing one Salic, we're playing one Meta Noise, one Gravekeeper's Trap, and then finally, one Exchange of the Spirit. So let's kind of talk about these uh, trap cards here. So Meta Noise and Salic. Salic Whenever it's sent to the graveyard, you can use this effect to add a tier elements monster from your deck to your hand. Meta Noise allows you to take a tier elements monster from your grave and put it back into your hand. Uh, they also have other effects like Meta Noise is a Book of Moon, uh, Salic is an Infinite Impermanence. Those really don't ever come up. You just use them for their engrave effects when you mill them. Um, Gravekeeper's Trap is interesting uh, because. If it's face up during your opponent's draw phase, then you can use its effect to declare the card name of the card that they draw. And if they draw it, they have to ditch it. Um, other than that, it's pretty much just a floodgate. The opponent can't activate uh, the effects of monsters in their graveyard if Exchange of the Spirit is in the graveyard. But to be quite honest, if you're activating Exchange of the Spirit, you're winning the fucking game. Um, now, 
Keep in mind that Exchange of the Spirit did get an errata, so both players have to have 15 cards in their grave. But what's funny about the new Exchange of the Spirit support is that they pretty much help Exchange of the Spirit act the way it was intended to back when it was originally out. So, you know, if you remember Exchange of the Spirit from back in the day, or maybe you just didn't play during that time, you know, once you got 15 cards in your grave, you could activate the Exchange of the Spirit. All of the opponent's cards in their deck would go to the grave. Now they don't have a deck because they didn't have any cards in their grave. Now with both players having to, you have to kind of work around that. Here's the thing with Exchange of the Spirit. All it requires for the condition when it's activated is that both players have to have 15 cards in their graveyard. Just at activation. Whatever happens when you chain to it is whatever happens when you chain to it. So when you activate it, it's now face up on the field. You can chain Mudora and Keldeo since they're both quick effects. Banish them both from the graveyard. Target 10 cards in the opponent's grave. Put them back in the deck. Then when Exchange of the Spirit resolves, you already have the 15 card requirement. So now you take your whole deck, put it in the grave. Take your grave, put it in the deck. The opponent's going to do the same thing, but now they're playing with a 5 card deck. All you need at that point is one more mill, whether it's an Aigido or a Kelbeck to mill five. Like, it's really, really insane. It doesn't come up that often, but when it does, it does. Keep in mind, too, that Exchange of the Spirit says swap. It does not say send. So when I looked at the rulings, it the rulings literally said the grave becomes the deck and the deck becomes the grave. So if you're playing, like, you know, Wolf, Light, Sworn, Beast... It doesn't get milled to the grave. You're just swapping your grave in your deck. So anything that would trigger when it's sent does not trigger. That is absolutely insane. And no wonder people get pissed off with this deck. <laughs> so for the extra deck, we're playing one tier elements. Lionheart requires Rhino Heart plus two other tier elements. 3,000 attack and defense with the field spell becomes 35, which is just beefy as fuck. Um, but whenever it's special summon or... Um, if a card or cards is sent from the grave to the deck, uh, it can pop a card. Um, it's it's cool. It's pretty much just a big ass beat stick. And then we have what's basically our combo starter: two copies of Kit Kalos. So Kit Kalos, whenever it's summoned, you can take a tier elements uh, monster from your deck and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. And then you can target a tier elements monster in your grave. Um, and then target a tier elements monster on your field, pop the tier elements monster to special summon the new one. Well, when this is destroyed by a card effect, you get to mill five. So you can target itself, pop it, and then bring out, like, say, Rhino Heart. So you can use Instant Fusion, bring out this, because of course it's level five, pop itself, get out Rhino Heart, and then use this card's effect to mill five, and then you also have Rhino Heart to either add one or dump one so that you're guaranteed a fusion. It, it, it's, it's insane. We're playing one window because you're playing Shadal, and Ints because you're playing Diviner, and then we're playing two copies of Dragos Capelli because you can make it very easily in this deck, uh, just with your tier, tier elements in the grave. Baroness to Fleur because it's easy as F. Uh, Boguska because it's Boguska. Abyss Dweller because you're playing level 4s. Time Thief Redoer because I like taking cards. Nightmare Unicorn because it's a nightmare. Um, this Barricade Board Blaster thing because you're playing... Uh, Field spells. And then you're playing Splite Elf because it requires any level or rank 2 monsters, um, which I don't even think you're even playing in this deck at all, if I'm being completely honest. Oh, I'm sorry. Your Herald of Orange Lights are level 2s. Your Diviners are level 2s if you don't use the effect. So, yeah, you um, you can play Splite Elf in this deck because why not? So, let's go ahead and dive into some combos real quick. All right, you guys. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this deck is confusing as hell to play. I'm still trying to learn it and the effects of the monsters and the intricacies. There may have even been some things I got wrong in this video, which I hope that I didn't because I really tried hard to make sure I got all these effects just in order and explain them correctly and everything like that. Um, I, I can't tell you how many takes I've had to do for this video. Um, so what I wanted to do for this deck profile is one encourage you to go and watch a lot of replays on youtube um because you're really going to need to study this deck a lot and really understand the knowledge you know as much as i want to say i'm a combo player I, i'm not a very good combo player so you know i'm good to combo in a certain degree but when it really starts getting confusing milling cards and things like that to put things in perspective i can never learn sylvan Yet, I could learn Prank Kids pre-Meow Meow Moo. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I really don't know why. I don't know 
what the difference is. But anyway, I wanted to show off some concepts that the board can make. You know, you may look at this hand and say, Avery, it's a three-card hand. But this can really be a combination of anything. You know, if you have an extender like Shaylin to ditch a monster and special summon it, well, then there you go. You can summon Diviner, dump the Aigido, and there you go. I'm just going to use this as an example because for Keldeo, you need to dump a different Earth Fairy. Uh, same with Medora. Medora is just a decent ditch. Or you could ditch Aigido. It's all the same thing. You know, they're all variations of sequences at this point. So I wanted to show off this board because I feel that this is a good way to show kind of how the deck functions because it really all depends on what you mill. It's not necessarily like, okay, if you open up Diviner, you win the game. It's just more of, hey, you open up Diviner and Extender, this is your ending board. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and jump into the combo. So you're going to start off by normal summoning your Diviner of the Herald. Keep in mind, you will actually have three other cards in your hand if you're going first. So if you open up like Herald of the Orange Light, the opponent's not going to be able to hand trap it. Um, and where you're going to dump to the graveyard are Aigido the... Ancient Century. Now remember when Aigido is dumped to the graveyard, both players have to mill the top five cards of their deck. If for whatever reason the top five cards of our deck we end up hitting a Chain to the Spirit, then we can either let ourselves mill another five cards or we're going to make the opponent mill another five cards. Spoiler alert, if you get to choose whether or not another five cards gets milled, you're going to want to pick the opponent because if you're able to hit Exchange of the Spirit, then they're going to be pooping their pants when they don't have a deck when it comes to their turn or whenever they hit 15 cards in their graveyard, whichever comes first. So we are going to go ahead and mill the top five cards. I need to put these cards in the right order. So we milled a Rhino Heart, a, what is that, Hoffenis, um, a Keldeo, that's pretty good, uh, a Miru, and then we also hit, what is that, Shaylin? So we hit Shaylin, Miru, and another Shaylin. Okay, so this is where the deck gets very complicated because you have Shaylin uh, and Miru, and now you can activate these on the same chain links if you want to. And this is where you have to uh, make your chains happen in a correct order. Um, you also have to make sure that you don't overdo on your chains to where you're just chaining things for no reason because once you activate Shaylin and Miru, you can't use Shaylin and Miru to fuse anymore. So you don't want to activate Miru and Shaylin and then just end up fusing with both of them anyway and then Miru can't fuse with anything or you're forced to fuse with cards in your hand or field since you already used the effect. So for this example's case, we also have Rhino Heart in the graveyard, which is really good. So let's go ahead and activate Shaylin. Since we don't have Shaylin in our hand, we'll go ahead and activate Shaylin's effect. I'm not going to chain Miru's effect because, you know, it's it's already in our graveyard. There's no reason to activate it. I am going to leave Rhino Heart in our graveyard, though, so that we already have it in the grave to make our Lion Heart this turn. We're going to send back Miru and Shaylin to the bottom of the deck, since that is a tier elements monster and an aqua type monster that is going to allow us to make the Tier Elements Kit Kalos. Tier Elements Kit Kalos' effect is going to activate, allowing us to add or send to the graveyard a Tier Elements Monster. And you know, we already have Rhino Heart in the graveyard. So I think just for funsies, we are going to go ahead and add Tier Elements uh, Shaylin to our hand. Uh, you could also add a Hoffenis here if you don't have it with one of your other three cards in your hand, so that you have a hand trap for the following turn, but I'm going to go ahead and do Shaylin so that I can special summon it uh, and have an extender if I want that extender for the following turn. Again, if you don't have Hoffenis in your hand, but you have Shaylin or something you want an interruption during the opponent's turn, you could just go for Shaylin. Again, they are all different variations of sequences. So we could also use Kid Kallus' effect to pop a card in mill 5, but I want to get the Baroness set up. So we're going to go ahead and activate Keldeo's effect, special summoning itself and ditching the Mudora. This is also going to grab us Exchange of the Spirit or a card that lists Exchange of the Spirit in its text. I'm a degenerate, so I'm going to go for Exchange of the Spirit for argument's sake, because if the opponent ends up with 15 cards in their graveyard, they're going to be pooping their pants when they've only got 5 cards in their deck. <laughs> So we're going to add the Exchange of the Spirit. We're going to set that Exchange of the Spirit immediately face down so that we don't have to worry about it. And now all we got to do is get 15 cards in our graveyard. Or we can just, you know, get 15 in our grave and or get 10 in our grave and get 15 in the opponent's grave. Anyway, I'm going to shut my mouth now and go ahead and synchro into our sexy little Baroness de Fleur. Now the opponent's playing with a five-card hand. Ain't that cute? It's real cute. So now we've got the Exchange of the Spirit. We've also got the Kit Callow set, and we've also got the Shaylin in our hand. That's kind of a booty booty butt cheek card right now because we don't got no extenders. But we're going to go ahead and activate the Kit Callow's effect, popping itself, and then we're also going to go for Lion Heart, or excuse me, Rhino Heart, um, which <laughs> I just realized, my dumbass, we've got Shaylin in hand so we can ditch it off the uh, 
Rhino Heart if we want to bring it from the grave. But right now, we're going to go ahead and activate Kit Kallus' effect and mill another five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. Holy balls, this is fucking broke. Okay, so... Da, 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 da. Kelbet can mill us another five. We milled a trap card so we can get the effect of our trap, and we can also set it if we want to. And we've also got another Medora and Keldeo, which no one really cares about. So, with the trap, we also... It was Salak, so Salak is going to let us add a tier elements monster... Uh, from our deck to our hand. So we'll go ahead and, and activate Kelbic on Chenlink 1 and Salak on Chenlink 2. And, you know, for argument's sake, I'm just going to say that we add Rhino Heart because Rhino Heart's not terrible to have in the hand. And now we're going to mill another five cards. And here's the thing. We did not mill a tier elements, but yet we have a tier elements loaded up ready to go at a moment's notice because we also have the Rhino Heart on the field that will let us dump a tier elements monster. Do you see where this gets confusing as shit now? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and do another five cards. And would you look at that? We milled another Aigido. Problem is we can't mill because we already used its effect. But we also milled Hoffenis. So we could use Hoffenis' effect to continue to fuse and make more plays. Um, so, yeah, I mean, at this point, we're already going into our lion heart here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and summon this in defense, because with my luck, I'm going to get lightning storm the fuck out. And, uh, we're going to go ahead and use Hoffenis' effect to fuse itself and the Kit Kalos. And for funsy's sake, I'm just going to say fuck it. We're going to do Rhino Heart. I know I'm forgetting to dump one at this point, but does it really matter? Like, seriously? <laughs> so we're going to do that. Uh, that's how we make the Rhino Heart, and, uh, again, we can still dump one, we can still fuse, we can set the Salad to our field off of the, uh, Kelbix effect, like, we are snowballing like no tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, we clearly have 15 cards in our graveyard, and if we don't, we can just dump one off of the Rhino Heart and just make more plays. So, guys... Let me know what you think. Again, this is just like a little example. Obviously, we could continue to pop off and continue to make plays, assuming that the opponent doesn't hand trap us. If they do, it doesn't even matter. We've got Baroness to Fleur. We may even have a Herald of the Orange Light in our hand. Guys, please, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Did I screw something up? I wouldn't be surprised if I did, quite honestly. So, this deck is confusing as hell. I barely know what I'm doing, and I'm the one making the video. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.